Skyler, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I'm starting to remember. Okay. Groovy. Thank you very much. Let me know if it doesn't work. <laughs> Let me know if it doesn't work. Oh, please. Yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> All right. A little administrative stuff. Welcome, welcome. Hope you guys had a good break. A little one. Since it'll be a while before we have another one, huh? <laughs> All right. Uh, first of all, I want to review and or show a few folks because we have some new people and or maybe it didn't work. This website, WebAssign, hopefully most of you have been there by now. I can tell most of you have. Um, but for the new folks that haven't found it yet, there's a few. Um, you can Google WebAssign Utah and you get this page where you see the login button in the lower left. Or you can, if you can see, make out the address up there. But if you go to just WebAssign, it, that's the, you know, the main one. And it'll just have you log in again once you get to Utah anyway. So you might as well just go straight to this one. Web Assign Utah. Hit this login button down here. Enter your info. Because it's getting close to where you get a free trial period. And it's about up. Uh, that's what I see. <laughs> you guys get to see this. Uh, so, uh, you following along? Yeah. Hey, great. Uh, so you can click the uh, continue trial period, but if you haven't purchased your access online after four, in four days, you're, you're out and you can't do homework and see announcements and things. And I guess that's your choice. <laughs> I was saying it was 25 when I did this a month ago, but some, somebody's probably bought it by now. How much was it? 25. I was right. All right. Oh, there you go. 24.99. Um, I I like this, uh, and it's not so much again that, to make my grading easy because I'm a lazy professor. Uh, hopefully, so a lot of you have seen by now in the homework. I can deduct points for different submissions, but I can give you multiple submissions, but you can still get some points instead of just getting a zero and you get immediate feedback. And as soon as the, the deadline's done, boom, you get the solutions. You don't have to wait on me to return it. It should help you guys study better and, and I, that's why I like it. So there you go. Uh, we'll continue. My trial period. They, they, they tell me, uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> Okay, I want to know how many of you, raise your hand if this is the first time you've noticed this. Hey, that's good, because I didn't announce it. This is, I posted it after class Friday, but we haven't met since then, so I, I was worried. I didn't know how many people would see it. Um, I, when I posted it, I set the due date as tonight, right before midnight. Uh, last I looked, most of you weren't done. Um, I realized I didn't t warn you about this. I just posted it hoping you'd see it for those of you that could start working on it. So I am leaning towards extending the due date on this one only. Does that make you happy or not? Does that make anybody irate? Because you've already wasted all your time? Because <laughs> I noticed some of you were done. Yes, Mary? Did, did you get my email back? I saw it this weekend. Okay, so where do I get your email back? Or the message? Did, you, you sent me a message through this, right? Yeah. I replied to the message. So in theory, you should see, uh, where is it at? <laughs> Might be in communication. Well, I assume we're... Hmm. 
Well, point is, Mary, I did extend it for you. It should have worked, so you should. Um, I, I replied to both. If you don't, can't find them, let me know. Yeah, check all the wonderful places the U sends you to. I think I did it sad now yet. Actually, it might have been Monday. It might have been Monday. It was the first I saw. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I saw your answer. I saw the example you added. So it looks like it did. Go back and check. If not, I'll, I'll, we'll make it right. I won't hold you against it because of technology. So you, the, the pressure's off. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, I, the, it's one thing I don't like about WebAssign when you hit submit. It doesn't like say in big letters. Yes, okay, you're good. It's, it is. It's it's very subtle. I don't like that. Cause I would like confirmation. Yes, I agree. That brings me to a point, though. Communication. Uh, this does have a place in here to uh, send me messages or whatnot. Um, I would prefer you you send everything to my email. I sent in the the syllabus. I, 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 that's the one I check the most. I'll, you'll get a quicker response. Um, I haven't turned off the messages on here, so if it happens, I'll see it, but it might not be right away. I prefer my email, and then I can get on you better, and then we won't have this issue anyway. Because, I, but we'll, <laughs> we'll find it, and if you beat me, to, you find it before I do. So tell me where it's at, because somebody else might have the same issues. Because somebody else sent me a message also through WebAssign instead of email. Mine just has a button at the top that said messages, so I, would, I, I wish the uh, student view and the instructor view were the same. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Okay, so point is, you have this homework assignment. It's currently due at, mi at midnight tonight. I'm going to extend that so you have more time. Uh, having said that, um, after today, we'll be on to past chapter 3. And so I'm going to post the next homework assignment for chapter 4 and 5, which will be due, you know, don't worry. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, probably in a week or so. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was thinking of getting through chapters 4, 5, and 6. Changed my mind. We're going to, so I want to make sure you get through Newton's Laws. And then we'll, uh, once that homework's done, we'll, re we'll review and we'll have a test up through chapter 5. So... There you go. So that link to my syllabus is right here. It's also down in resources, which you can't see. Resources down there. That one's just a PDF. I did this one up here in the announcements because when you click there, it actually goes somewhere else. I post it and has links that work. <laughs> so that's where you can, can find that info or review or if you lost it, as well as the superhero paper. Assignment. How do we do the impact force problem? Impact force problem. Yeah. I don't mind that. Before I get to it, though, I, I, wanted, I figured it's time. The superhero paper assignment, if this is the first you heard of it, it's there. Uh, it's due in April. All the instructions are there. You get to write a, a paper and design your own superhero. Has anybody read that and had questions? You can start working on it any time and turn it on, turn it in any time up till then. Correct. It can obey the laws or not, or a mix thereof. The point is, show me you've learned some physics. If he doesn't obey the laws, I, you, tell me why. This is the law. This breaks it. I, I, I realize this is how it works, and this does. You know, I want to see that you learn physics is the main point. Same if it is okay. How does that apply to Newton's first law, or whatever you chose, you know? And it can be any, any physics topic, even if we're not covering it this, in this class. Groovy. All right. Uh, yeah, that should be good. Leave that up. I have it here. What number is that? I can find it faster. The impact one. Thank you. Number nine. <clears throat> 
what is the impact speed when a car moving at 105 kilometers an hour bumps into the rear of another car traveling in the same direction at 102? These problems, you always have to be able to visualize them. So I usually draw pictures, but since I have two cars here. So this one's going at 105, and this one's going a little slower at 102. And it, yeah, I was going to say I'd never run into it. <laughs> See, that's a feature. If you're reading a problem and it doesn't make sense like that, think about the problem, especially your answer. Wait, he's going 105, he's going 102, and they run into each other? Wait, they can't ever run into Something's wrong. I've messed up. <laughs> My all-time favorite was uh, doing labs, Colorado State University. And it asks for, what's the force of a bow on an arrow? You know, pull it back. Whoosh, it exerts a force on it to make it move, change its motion, and accelerate. And you, people can relate. Arrows go fast. Whoosh, it's got to be a significant force. Calculate it. That's what they did. And their answers would be like, Two pounds of force. And they turn it in. Because that's what they calculated. It made sense. That's the equation they used. They did it. Does that bug anybody? My, my point is they didn't stop and think about two pounds. Let's see. This is about two pounds, roughly. So if I set this on an arrow, it's just going to start whoosh, whiz, That's enough force to make it whiz across it? No. That doesn't even make sense. So you probably did something wrong. <laughs> that's my point. Think about your, the questions and the results. Uh, needless to say, it wasn't two pounds. Okay, so he's going a little faster. Boom. What it wants to know, and I haven't discussed impact speed yet, the book does. And that's why I like the book. What is that impact speed when it bumps into it? 102, 105. So what, what's the speed of impact, so to speak? You know what I mean? Simplify for you, you answer. Let's say I'm going t 10 miles an hour, I'm not, and I run into the wall. <laughs> What's the impact speed? What if the wall is moving? That's this case. If it's moving away from me, is it going to hurt as much when I run into it? So the impact speed would be more or less? Correct. So again, shout out some answers what you think. 102, 105. You're right. And this emphasizes a point in uh, chapter 3 about relative motion. Uh, when we, when we, uh, we take for granted that when we say speed and velocity, uh, we say it's going 50 miles an hour. Technically, there's that back underlying assumption that relative to what? Well, 55 miles an hour, did I say 55 or 50? Whatever. Relative to the ground. We just take that for granted. But it's always relative. So in this case, it's relative to the two cars. One's already moving, so the difference is only three. And you guys saw that, or at least most of you did, that shouted it out. Is this helping? Make sense? Questions, concerns, queries? Groovy. Yeah. What the hey? <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, I, that's a... I've been asked that before. So you're on uh, 12B, right? I think I found it. Is that the one you just read? 12B. Can an object be accelerating when its speed is zero? Okay, I have somebody shout out, yes, d uh, defend yourself. Okay, so you're saying, who's saying no over here? Defend yourself. This is great. See, I love this. You're thinking like scientists now. <laughs> Both of these are logical. So which one's right, though? Well, that's why you're taking the class. So back to his first. Uh, you throw it up and down. That was your example? Let's see. Is it accelerating on its way up? Well, that's the easier question. Is it accelerating on the way down? Yes. Anybody disagree with that? Okay, you're right. So is it accelerating on the way up? 
You're adamant. Why? Because gravity is always accelerating it down. He is correct. Earth is pulling on this mass down, whether it's moving up or down. It's always pulling on it. So there's a force of gravity always trying to accelerate it downward. So uh, when it's going up, there is a force trying to accelerate it down, which makes this slow down. It changes its velocity. So back to yours, though. I said, okay, wait. Acceleration's a change in velocity. If its speed is zero, it has no velocity. How can it be changing? Is that your argument? Yeah. It, it is. It's changing its direction. Right at the top, its velocity is zero. Right there. Right there-ish. <laughs> right before it, it's moving up. We would say it's positive velocity. But it's decreasing, correct? Let's say it's going 10 meters per second. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Turns around and starts going in the other direction. Velocity is a vector, so we'll call it negative. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, negative 10. So at that, at that moment, its speed is 0, but it's still changing. So, so it wasn't moving at the top, but there's still an acceleration on it. Causing it to change. And it's just like if I, uh, uh, you can do it horizontally too, you know, something with a spring. Do I have one? No. You can throw it, you know, or a yo-yo. You go down whoosh, and pull it back up. Yeah, crude example, but I think, is this helping? Darn close. Darn close. Yeah, for that instant, and this is a term I wanted to use today, the book specifies between instantaneous speed, velocity, and average. At that instant, its speed and velocity is zero. At that instant. But it's in the process of changing. And even while it's zero, there's a force acting on it, causing it to accelerate downward. And so it is still accelerating as it changes through zero. But you are right. At that very instant, it is not moving. Its speed is zero, but it's in the process of changing. That acceleration, that force is still acting on it. Does that make sense? Because that can be very confusing. Thus, that's an example of yeah, something can have a speed of zero and still be accelerating, at least for an instant. Yeah, hang time. Is the basketball player still in acceleration? Yeah, technically everything on Earth is constantly trying to be accelerated down, whether I'm in the air or not, on the way up or down, at the top, standing right here. It's still, that force is always acting on us, trying to accelerate us, that force. Am I accelerating? Very good. And I want, this is where I want to reemphasize from last lecture, net force. Net force is very important. That's what's going to determine whether there's an actual acceleration or not. Gravity is always pulling on us, so there's always that force that we can't get rid of here on Earth, so to speak. But that doesn't mean there isn't a second force acting at the same time. In this case, what's the other force acting on me? The floor, the ground, pushing back up. So you have... Uh, Aren't they gorgeous? All right. So, force due to gravity, if I will, trying to accelerate me down, but the floor is pushing back up on me. S for support. Your book calls it a support force. And I drew these as vectors, arrows, roughly the same magnitude, length, so they're balanced. Another term that comes with equilibrium. This is an equilibrium. It's balanced. This balances that. I'm not, I'm not moving. The net force is, so my acceleration is zero. Now, if uh, I were to go to Jupiter, eh, bad example, if uh, I remove the table, <laughs> then this force goes away, and now the net force is that, and I start accelerating downward. 
And then the air resistance starts pushing back on me, right? And it might be less. And as long as that air resistance If that is less than this, which way do I go? I have a net acceleration down, but it's not as great as just due to gravity. It's because there's a net effect. And if this gets big enough and bigger and bigger and it matches this, if air resistance matches, is there a net acceleration? Am I moving? Yes. Yeah, I could, as well, as long as I haven't hit the ground yet. <laughs> uh, we call that terminal velocity, as your books are, terminal speed. I will stop accelerating and stay at whatever velocity I'm at at that point and just keep going at that speed because uh, there's no acceleration, there's no net force. Until you hit the ground, and then that force comes in, and I'm dead. Okay. Yes. Can acceleration be zero and still be considered acceleration? No. No. If, if acceleration is zero, that, there is no acceleration. The acceleration of an object is relative to what the observer sees. So we're seeing you right here, and you're not accelerating. But if I were looking at you from the moon, would you? Explain. Hey, you're thinking like a scientist. You're absolutely right. I didn't get into that right now because I didn't want to muddy the waters. But you're absolutely right. And that reinforces motion is relative. Relative to what? I took the assumption that I'm not accelerating. Yeah, with respect to this frame of reference, that we're all in moving together on this spaceship Earth. But yeah, you step out of Earth and you can see Earth moving. We're all moving, aren't we? And accelerating around the sun. True. True. So if I ever ask a question on the test, I, I, I will need to specify. If I do not specify, because I forget, assume this reference frame. <laughs> Basically, I should say it the other way. If I want you to think about you know, something weird like that, not normal, I'll specify. Otherwise, it's safe to assume I mean relative to ground, relative to Earth. That's fair. I may get caught on it. Don't worry, I won't count it against you. I make mistakes too. So, yeah. Which one? Fifteen. Let's look at it. Yep. I figured in my mind that one would probably be a little harder for some of you. So this is the one. Someone standing at the edge of a cliff. Okay, it's a little cliff. You've got to visualize these things. Throws a ball nearly straight up at a certain speed. Eee. And another ball nearly straight down at the same initial speed. So I can either throw it straight down or straight up, same speed. They want to know if air resistance is negligible. Okay, good. We don't have to worry about that at this point. Which ball will have the greater speed when it strikes the ground below? Who thinks the one I throw down will have more? The one I throw up will have more. And who thinks they'll be the same? Who hasn't voted? Who doesn't care? Well, that's your homework. That's why you care. Okay. All right. The majority is going with neither. Explain, somebody explain it. Did you hear that? It does. He is correct. So that's why I want to see if you, you heard him. Yeah, I throw this up at a certain speed. Let's say it's 10 meters per second. Whoosh, at the top, we know it went to zero. But then it just turns right back around, goes the same distance for the same amount of time. And so it speeds back up, and it does. It gets back to 10 meters per second in that direction. So the velocity has changed technically, because it's a different direction. 
that's going down now, but it is the same in magnitude. The speed's the same at this point. Up, whoosh, as soon as I let go, and right before I catch, the speed's the same. So it would be the equivalent as me just throwing it down at that speed, because by the time it gets back down here, if I don't catch it, it is going that speed down. Um, from this point on, they both continue to accelerate and increase their speed. So when I throw it, it, it's like it starts with 10 meters per second down and then accelerates and increases. But so does the one that by the time it gets there, it's up to 10, negative 10, and continues to accelerate at the same rate as the other guy. And so, the, yeah, they, they will match and they'll hit the ground at the same. Yeah, then that's just not completely visualizing the question. Yeah, if you drop it, that, it starts at zero velocity, right? Who would win then? I throw it up, let it hit the ground. Whoosh. At the same time, I drop one. Whoosh. Think about that. All right, I'm going to attempt to throw this one up and this one down at the same speed. We'll see. Does that bug anybody? Good, because usually it bugs, well, that one hit first. Well, yeah, but the speed when they did hit was the same. Okay. Bueno. <laughs> So what you want to observe this time is the speed. I think you'll be able to tell. Check, just get a you know, visual how fast this thing's moving when it hits the ground. Ready? Okay, versus this guy when he hits the ground. I, I don't know. Can you see? It's, it looks like it's going slower. If not, you can tell it doesn't bounce as high, so it wasn't going as fast. So you're right. Had you dropped it, the question asked that. That might be a good test question, right? Switch out the uh, homework questions, change them up slightly. Since I brought it up, that's my intent, is to ask questions just like the homework, just like the examples in the book. I mean, they're going to be similar, very similar. Great. I want to see what I'm forgetting for chapter two. Let me check. When I, since we're on this example, I throw this up after I let go of it. Bad example. I'm in space. <laughs> and I throw this up. Yeah, what's ways up in space? Whatever. As soon as I let go of it, what does it do? It keeps going. Why? That's good. I heard lots of things, and they all sounded right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no force to slow it down. Whose law is that? Which number? Yeah, and that's a, it, it, what property of matter defines this? Inertia. Is inertia keeping it going? Thank you. That's what I wanted to emphasize. Inertia is not a force. It's a property of matter. It's resistance to want to change its motion. So if it's moving at a certain speed, it'll stay doing that until something acts on it. But there's nothing keeping it going. I'm not pushing it to keep moving along in space. I want you to realize that inertia is not a force. Yeah? Third. Action, reaction, force on it. Yeah, we haven't gotten to that chapter yet, but we will very soon, very soon. Newton's third law is that. You push on it, it pushes back. No, no, no. We'll, uh, we, we, we can't cover all of it. We don't have time. I'm going to, after chapter, well, I'm going to get the next homework assignment does four and five. We'll have a test. And then I intend to do six and seven, momentum and energy. And then I'm going to skip to a section in ten on projectile motion.
And then uh, I feel that you guys will have, uh, have a good foundation of forces and motion and whatnot and energy. And so then I'm going to jump to uh, 13 and 14 on liquids and gases, and we're going to talk about fluids and buoyancy. And then maybe sound or heat. See where we're at. So, yeah. Got that, got that. Net force. Remember net force. Write that in your notes. It's net force is what's important because a lot of people forget. So another example, I did it before, but it's a great one. You're driving your car down the highway at 55 miles an hour. Okay, 70 miles an hour. And you're staying at that speed. So what is your velocity? 70 miles per hour. Yeah, some direction, just so you remember it's a vector. Uh, speed is just 70 miles per hour. What's your acceleration? Zero. What's your uh, net force? Boy, well, you guys weren't as confident. What forces are acting on the car? What's that one? Yeah, the, the engine, which ultimately turns the tires. The tires pushing on the ground. So the ground pushes back. See, we're already getting into Newton's third law. So the ground pushing on the car has the wheels turned to push it forward. That's one force. Does that make it accelerate? Right, we're still going 70 miles an hour. The engine's running, so that force is acting. Why aren't we going faster? Friction internally with the ground, air resistance. We'll just sum that all up with friction. Go in the opposite direction. So the net force must be zero because we're not accelerating. So that's why it, where it looks like, because I just threw this out in space, and what's keeping it going at that constant speed? Nothing. Nothing's acting on it to change it. A car, that, this ex car example was different. There are two forces acting on it. The engine is keeping it moving forward, trying to overcome resistance, but they're balanced. So the car is still moving. It has a speed. It has a velocity, but they're not changing. So we're not accelerating. The net force is zero. There's forces acting on it, but the net force is zero. So that's my example for emphasizing net force. Wink, wink. The engine is still doing work. It's still trying to turn the tires and the ground is pushing the car forward constantly. That force is always being applied. But so is resistance. So what's the car have to be giving more force to keep it going straight? I'm glad you asked it. Would the car have to be giving a little more force to keep it going, to keep it going straight? No. That's where the inertia comes in. If those forces are balanced, we okay. So the ground's pushing the car forward. Ground, ultimately from the engine working. And resi air resistance pushing it back. Then this balances that. The net force is zero. We don't change our motion. And inertia keeps us going the velocity we were currently going, 70 miles an hour in this case. If all of a sudden you turn off the engine or get off the accelerator, well, you just change this force, right? And now this force is acting, and the net force is no longer zero, and you start decelerating. Negative acceleration starts slowing down. But yeah, you don't need any more to maintain 70. You just have to balance what's resisting you. Same when you're falling in the air. The air resistance and gravity, if they're balanced, your terminal velocity. You're still falling, but this one doesn't have to be more than this one. These are great questions. See, it shows me you guys are thinking about this stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Did you guys find the book helpful? Okay, those that are, not, are nodding one way or another are yeses, so okay, good. <laughs> Support force. Equilibrium again. They use that term. That's just, you know, things are balanced. We did that, we did that, we did that, we did that. 
Okay, I want to give you another one to do on a date or something, you know, impress your uh, date. Actually, I can, volunteer can try this one. I set this here, piece of cardboard, and a fake coin on the top. And the idea is to, can you hit this out fast enough, right? Because the coin has inertia. If you can do it fast enough, it's going to try to drag it, the friction between it, and exert a force on it and pull it that way. If you can do it fast enough, it should fall straight down into the cup. Who wants to try? Oh, he, is, yeah, he saw his hand first. <laughs> Go for it. Whenever you're, here, get over here so they can see you. They want to watch. Must go faster, I guess, huh? I always like second tries, so help yourself. That happened last semester, except it went over there and shattered. <laughs> Want another try? Hey! Very good. <laughs> Very good. And you guys were astute, observant scientists. What did you notice uh, where he hit it the first two times? On the outside. Good. And then the last time, he went in. If you hit on the outside, what forces act on the coin? Very good. Yeah, when you hit here, it smushes. Well, that applies another force. Upward. You can have a horizontal force, friction trying to drag it along, and an upward force at the same time. So if you got this and you got this, those two are going to resolve, and the net force will be in which direction? Point. If you got one go pushing that way and one pushing this way, which way is it going to go? Somewhere in between them. And so, yeah, it went that way and up. So you, you didn't stand much of a chance of making it. So you figured out the trick. If you do it on the inside, it flattens out. It's like it's even better removing it out from underneath it, and it just gravity acts on it and it falls. So when you, you know, impressing your date, you do it like this. You're, all right. And everybody thinks you're going to hit right here, and you go, and grab right here. And if you practice, it's not too bad. You just kind of go, whoosh. And then you, of course, grab it so they can't tell you're holding it like this, and there you go. All right. We've uh, uh, touched on these. I want to do an experiment showing it. Speed, position, acceleration. Get a better idea of these. Which one? Yeah, that one. I'm going to place markers as this car moves along to note its position. Start on this side. And we're going to try to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to turn it on. Out of my way. Starts here at time zero. I'm going to attempt to make equal time in increments. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. That's enough. And because I made them and they're fun, let me grab them out. So after the first second, it had moved to here. After the second second, it's here. Three, four, five. Now you can see in the back better. This one's dying. OK. Observations. How do you know that? Why does the spacing between each of these being equal mean it's going constant speed? Well said. Speed is distance over time. Velocity is distance over time with direction. So if it goes the same distance in the same time, can you see that that number would always be the same? Yeah, roughly a foot a second. Oh, look, it went another foot in the next second, another foot in another second. So yes, the equal spaced 
shows that they're constant velocity. What's the acceleration then? Very good. What's the net force? Very good. Are there forces acting on the buggy? Yes, the battery's trying to propel it and friction trying to, they must be balanced though, so there's no net force. Very good. So if you were to graph this, which I'm not asking you to, but I want you to see it. If you graphed position versus time, what do you expect it to look like? Anybody have an idea already? A line like that? You're right. Because <laughs> it moves a foot in a second, a foot, a second, a foot, a second, a foot, a second. You remember the term slope from your math classes? Slope is the rise over the run. Well, the rise is the up and down. That's distance. And the run is time. Oh, look, it's distance over time. That is velocity, speed. And it's, it's being constant. Some people like graphs and it sinks better. If this is confusing you, don't be too worried. But yeah, same distance. Okay, so what would velocity versus time look like? A straight line? Because it's constant. It's not changing. If it's a foot a second, let's say that's a foot a second. Yeah, it'd look like that. What's the slope of that? Zero, right, because the rise is always zero. So the slope would be zero. Well, the slope of this is velocity over time, isn't it? What is that? That's what acceleration is. The last time I put a little thing, a change in velocity. will help you remember. Acceleration is a change in velocity. That happens over a certain amount of time, as your book says. This one has no change in velocity. So this, yeah, the acceleration is zero. So what do you think acceleration would look like? Zero. <laughs> it didn't work too well, did it? There we go. Let's change it out and try a different vehicle and see what you can learn about it. One thousand one, one thousand two, one thousand three, one thousand four, one thousand five. First, second, 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 third, fourth, fifth. Observations. It's accelerating. Good. You guys are getting this. Uh, it, I'm. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. It has increased its distance with each second. If I plotted this position, what do you think it would look like? <laughs> position, time, I heard a curve. Yeah, because the first second, it doesn't go very far, right? So it might have gotten eh, maybe a little high. Be down here. A little high. But the next one, it, it went even further. So, you know, if we've got equal in increments here, that one, if it was straight, it would keep like that. Well, it went further the next time, maybe up to here. And the next one went even further. So yeah, it should look like a curve. That's a clue. Because the distance is changing with time. The slope is changing. Do you see that? It starts out here, if you remember your slope. Anyway, what would this one look like then? You think it should look like this one? Uh, ideally, yes, that is right. In this case, it is increasing its velocity. Each second, the velocity is getting faster and faster, but by the same amount. Something, uh, before I say that, acceleration, what do you think? Is it accelerating? Again. Yeah, so it's not zero. And I don't totally expect you to know if it's changing or not. But, yeah, but I'll tell you, it, it, it's not changing, ideally. 
And so it kind of looked like that. The acceleration is constant, meaning there's always a change in velocity. And I want to emphasize in free fall, gravity is an acceleration. It's an acceleration due to gravity. It's 9.8 meters per second per second. Uh, you know, we can round to 10 for most purposes. 10 meters per second per second. That means every second, the velocity changes by 10 meters per second. Let me write that. 10 meters per second per second. So every second, the velocity increases by 10 meters per second. That's why this looks like this. Whoa, 10 meters per second in one second. Another 10 meters per second in a second. 10, 10. So when you drop things, it looks like this. You got gravity at 10 meters per second. And it makes things change their position more and more and more. As you, you guys are aware of this, but you're putting it to physics now. And we relate in the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. Oh, I didn't get to those clicker questions. I told somebody I was doing a clicker question. Yeah, well, we'll do it next time. Um, sure, there's something else I didn't want to tell you. No, that's good. <laughs> Questions? All right, so, yes. Um, huh. Do you think, uh, oh, heck. Saturday midnight? I'll make the, that homework due Saturday midnight. I am going to post the next one too, so those of you that want to start working on it. So you'll see another homework assignment as well.